And so today my message is entitled, I'm taking you with me. Can you guys say that to your neighbor? I'm taking you with me. I'm taking you with me. You'll know why I'm talking about that in a minute. Before we get into the text, I'm going to be talking about the promised land and about crossing over into that place. And I'm going to be talking about the wilderness a little bit. And so before we get into the text, I want to give you guys some background because some people may not know the story about the Israelites being freed from slavery, but the Israelites were slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years for a very long time, meaning that some people that were in, in Egypt were born into slavery, all they knew. And then God comes and he's ready to deliver them and bring them into a new place. And so he brings them into out of slavery and on the road to the promise that he's always had for them, but they have to get through the wilderness to get there. And so wilderness is not fun. How many of you guys would agree that it feels like we've been in a wilderness season the last few years? For some people in this room, I know this is true. For you, it was way beyond the pandemic. It was before that you've been in a wilderness season. You've been going through some things, and I believe this, that God is going to speak to your heart today. Because he sees you, he knows the situation, and he does not want you to stay stuck in between the rescue and the promise. He wants to see you get all the way through to the very end because his promise for you hasn't changed. His promise for the church hasn't changed. So we're going to do this together. Can you say, I'm taking you with me? I'm taking you with me. So we get to this place where the Israelites are now getting ready to actually cross into the promised land. They're up and up, they're up to the up to the the Jordan River, right? They're up to the Jordan. And and it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good thing. And um what I want to say is this really quick: is that the wilderness season is hard because things happen in the wilderness season that make us question things. So before we even can get to the Jordan, I want to talk about the wilderness a little bit. Because I know that many people in this room have been questioning some things. I know that I have been questioning some things. I know that I question things. What I do know is this, is that the last few years, that even whatever, whoever sent it, I don't know. Nobody knows how it all happened and what, everything, what came with the pandemic. But what I do know is this, is that God allowed it. And what I do know is that God is using it to make his people strong. Because he uses hard times to produce the strength in us that we need. And this is what I believe. Is that the reason why he's in building endurance in us is because of what's to come. He's making his church strong because of what's to come. Don't get scared because we already have the victory in Christ, but he's doing something in us on purpose for a reason. There's always reason for things and he uses things that even we don't see coming. He has always seen it coming. But one of the things that really breaks my heart about the wilderness is that dreams die in the wilderness. And I know people, I look around and I see, I see people that have taken a step back from their faith. I see people that are questioning whether or not God is who he said he was. If their faith, if their belief is, is still what they believe. And I want to tell you that, yes, God is still faithful. Yes, God is still willing. And yes, God will still do it. But the wilderness has a way where it, doubt sneaks up on you. Unbelief sneaks up on you. The Israelites that came up to the Jordan River... We're only the ones that we're going to cross, but there was generations that didn't make it. And that was because of unbelief. And what I want to say today is that God, that the wilderness is never God's permanent destination for us. Never. Never his destination that he has for us. It's always just getting to where he wants us to go. And so we're going to do that together. Our faith in God will position us to experience the promises of God. And we cannot get stuck. Would you say amen? amen? So we get to the Jordan. And I'm going to read you guys 
in the, from the book of Joshua, we're gonna get to the text. It's in Joshua 1, and I'm gonna read it 1 through 3 and then 5 through 10. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready. Can you say get ready? Amen. To cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Verse 5, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And then something happens. Verse 10. So Joshua got up and ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, Get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you for your own. God, yes. God hasn't changed his mind. He will give us what we're willing to step into. Not what we hope for, not what we wish for, not what we long for. He will give us what we're willing to step into. He said, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. The whole land was given, but they could only possess that which they claimed. Let me tell you, say something real quick. The enemy has tried to make us think that we can't have what we know we're supposed to have. He has come and told, tried to tell us that the church is dying, that no one's going back to church, and that this and this, and we can't gather, and all these different things, and I'm not going to go into any of that, because I know that we have to be sensitive to a lot of different things, so I'm, I'm, not, giving an, I'm not giving an opinion on that. What I'm saying is that as a church, he has planted some seeds of lies that is making us think that we cannot inherit what God has said is ours. And so if you are believing right now for a restored relationship, a marriage that has been broken, if you're believing for a, a someone you love that is addicted to drugs and they just need freedom and healing, I'm telling you that God will still do what only he can do, that it is never too late, that God is always looking and wanting to give a promise to people that are hungry and ready for it. And he uses people like you and I to say, we're going to step into it. We're going to do whatever it takes to see God's will be done all around us. And his will is good. So the Israelites, they could take what they fought for, knowing that there was a determined opposition. But remember... God always said they would have the victory. But let me say something that might be a little ouch. Because taking the land took effort, the challenge ahead was not for those who were content with Egypt or the wilderness, but for those who would press ahead for what God called them to. Let me ask you a question. What have you become comfortable with? Not out of disobedience, not even out of rebellion, but maybe out of weariness. What have you become comfortable with? 
What a part of your life that you know is not healthy have you made friends with? What about, what is it about this generation that's the younger generation? What is it that has caused them to agree with who the world says they are? They become comfortable with depression. They become comfortable with anxiety. They become comfortable with things that God never intended them to have. And it's not because, of, because they want it. It's because it's what has been spoken to them. And they become comfortable with it. And God is saying, no, that is not your place. You are not a slave. You are not a slave to anything that would make you feel that way. You are not a slave to those things. I actually am the God who can rescue you out of those places and bring you into a place of promise. And the place of promise replaces every fear and doubt with hope and love and faith and strength and power. He is saying, don't become comfortable with those things that you think are permanent because they are not permanent. Egypt wasn't and the wilderness isn't. The wilderness is hard and it's a season, but it's never the permanent destination ever. And I want you guys to catch that because as a church, we're going to be strong together. And just like we walk over into deliverance and to freedom, we are taking you with us. The awesome thing about God is that if we're willing to do our part, he, I promise you, will do the rest. He will only require us to do what we can do. He knows our limitations. He knows what's in us. He understands our strengths and everything. And he's saying, you just do your part. And I promise you that where there's a gap, where there's a need, where you can't do it, that I will come in and I will be that for you. And you will make it to the other side. And I know we hear it. We believe it. It doesn't mean we don't get discouraged. It does not mean that we do not get discouraged. See, Joshua comes to the Jordan River, and God's there ready to speak life into him. And he tells him, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Now, he's telling him this because Joshua needed encouragement. Joshua was a leader. Joshua was, was right by Moses' side. He ministered with him. Joshua understood the faith. Joshua had seen God do things. God, Joshua had faith out of experience. But in this moment, he was discouraged. In this moment, he probably felt weak. Because if he didn't, God wouldn't have had to come in and speak life into him. Now, you can think about this. You can imagine this. His whole life, he's hearing about this promised land. He's hearing about the good things of God, and God has been faithful. And it's not what he's done is even doesn't even compare to what he's going to do in the promised land. He's seen all these things. He heard it from his parents, and he heard it from Moses. But he gets to the Jordan, and guess what? They're not with him. His assumption, I would assume, is that they were going to be there with him. That everyone he loved, everyone he cared for was going to cross over with him and they were going to experience this amazing life that God had for them together. But he didn't have these people. He didn't have his parents. He didn't have Moses, his pastor. It was him. And it was him and God. And you know what he realized? Was that God was all he needed. Amen. He made a decision. Because he couldn't change the fact that not everybody was there. He couldn't change the fact that maybe those he loved didn't make it. He had to make a decision that he was going to move forward no matter what. Can I say something to you guys that right now in this hour, we need to make a decision that no matter what, that we are going to move forward and see God's kingdom advance. We are going to move forward and see our family set free. We are going to move forward and see peace and hope and love, not just heard, but alive and living in us and the people around us that God is going to do what only he can do. We have to make that decision as a church. And we have to decide that we're not doing it by ourselves. That we're not doing it alone. Because that has never been God's plan. When you're believing for a promise, you know who you're listening to matters. Joshua 
positioned himself to open his ears to hear what God was saying. But it wasn't just Joshua's voice in that moment that gave him the courage to cross over, but it was the voice of Moses. Because Moses would tell him, be strong, be courageous. The promised land is there and we're gonna do it. We're gonna make it. God is faithful. And so, Moses, so Joshua had this, this strength behind him that was always pushing him into what God had. We need to be those voices in this hour. We need to be those voices to each other to the people around us, to the world that God has placed in your life, your world, you can be a voice that can push people into a place of promise and into a place of purpose. And let me tell you why this is so important. It's important that you know who you're listening to. It's important that you're watching who you allow to speak into your life. It's important to watch when something gets too heavy. Let me say something, when social media gets too heavy, when the media gets too heavy, when voices that are, that are, that are very um, negative, and when it gets too heavy, when you start to feel it in your soul, I want you to stop and question, who am I listening to? What am I listening to? Because the, this is the thing. Your, the voices that you listen to, if it's a wrong voice, it can cost you the promise. It can cost you your promise. When, I, when I've gone through things, and I'm going to say the last couple years have been hard, and I'm not going to get into any detail about it, but what I will say this is I had to watch who I was listening to because when I heard people speak things that went against what I was believing for, the promise of God, I could feel it penetrate to the deepest part of my being. And I had to say, no, God, like, I can't. I had to watch. You have to watch who you're listening to so that you don't forfeit your promise. Joshua was ready to cross over because Moses taught him about God's faithfulness, and he passed down what he needed to have victory. We need to be those voices. You know, what I've noticed is that you can, if you look around, you can see that, you know, our our um, mothers and fathers, matriarchs, patriarchs, strong in the faith, they're moving on into glory. And many of them did such an amazing job with passing down the faith. We need generational faith. As a church, we need generational faith, not just one generation, every generation strong, every generation being able to express the goodness of God, not because of what they hear, but because of what they know. We need generational faith. And so I believe this, that God is raising up people to be those mothers and fathers in this hour to look around and see who needs to hear this. Who doesn't know? Who doesn't have this faith in them? And God will use us to be the people, that, to push people into the promised land. What's cool about, about this um, story is that once Joshua was encouraged... He then turned and went to the people and said, let's go. And that's where we're at right now. We're encouraged. I hope you're encouraged that, that God is not done, that God still has a plan. But now we have to turn and say, okay, let's go. Let's do this. We're not doing this alone, which means this, that God never intended for you to be isolated. That God never intended for you to take a step back and then not be connected to the body of Christ. We need the body of Christ because when one hurts, we all should hurt. And if we're not able to know when someone's hurting, how can we help? As a church, we want to help the people around us to be strong, to be, to be able to experience all that God has for them. So if you're in this room and you're experiencing lack in any way, if you're believing for something and you're weary right now, please join the life group. Talk to your pastor. Talk to your leader. And I promise you that when you are connected to the body of Christ, you will find a strength that helps you to keep going because I'm taking you with me. You're not going by yourself. God designed his church to work and win together. Yes. To work and win together. It's work, but we're going to win together. We're going to do this together. Amen? Yes. So I know it all sounds good. <laughs> But sometimes it's like, okay, I hear you and I want it, but how do I get there? <laughs> how do I get there, Jenny? Well, let me just share some things that I believe God spoke to me through this story with Joshua. You know, I believe that in this moment when they were here at the Jordan and God was preparing them, he was preparing their heart. 
to cross over. Because this is the truth, is that the actual crossing was going to be the easy part. <laughs> but once they crossed, they'd actually have to now take the land, which means they were going to have to go through some battles. And so God used this moment to do something in the Israelites that would sustain them and get them ready to go in and then take possession of all that God had. All of it. That's what he wants to do with us today. And so he did it in the beginning because I believe this, that God wanted to prove his power and faithfulness immediately. So when they came up against Jericho, they knew their God. They knew his faithfulness. They knew his power. They knew that he was always going to have their back. So Joshua, he, God gave Joshua clear instruction about how to cross the Jordan and get into the promised land. And the first thing was this. In Joshua 1.9, he said, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He didn't, he didn't go and say, Joshua, be strong. Come on, be strong. Be courageous. He didn't do that. He said, Joshua, be strong. Right. Joshua, be courageous. He spoke to him in such a way that it went to the deepest part of who he was. It wasn't just here. It went all the way deep here and said, Joshua, rise up right now and be who I called you to be in this hour. He spoke to his spirit. He spoke to his weary soul and he said, rise up, get up. He will never require us to do anything that's not already designed in us. Strength is designed in you. Courage is designed in you. Faith is designed in you. It's all already in you. And he's saying, just be who I called you to be. So when the enemy comes in in the wilderness season and makes you question who you are, God wants to remind you that those questions are not valid, but his voice is. Who he says about you is who you are because the only one that can define who you are is the person who made you. He, is the, oh, he created your inmost being. He created every detail of who you are. He knows the little things that are in you, and he's calling them out right now to say, rise up, because we're going over and we're crossing into the promised land. The wilderness is a vulnerable time. Because you're in this middle where you know you're not who you used to be and you have some faith, but you just can't get to that, that answer. You're believing and you're praying, but you're not, you're not quite sure because you haven't seen it yet. And maybe it's been, let's be honest, maybe it's been years and years and years and you're believing maybe for a child to be saved. Or maybe you're believing for someone to be healed. And you're, maybe you're believing for a family and you're waiting. So the wilderness is such a vulnerable time that the enemy comes in and he makes you question, one, who you are, and two, who God is. He's going to make you wonder, God, is, are, is this real? Are you there? He's there. You know that he even questioned Jesus in the wilderness? his identity. He said, if you are the son of God, then make these stones turn into bread and feed yourself. He questions our identity because he wants us to believe the lie that he's trying to speak into our heart. So if God is telling you right now that you're not going to make it, if God is telling you right now that all hope is lost in a certain situation, I'm here to tell you that that is not true, that God will never, ever quit if you don't. If you are willing to take a step, he will take that step with you. If you're willing to, uh, to fight for the land, he will give you the land. He will give you all of the things that you are willing, willing to go after. Because he is a good God. Amen? Amen. The other thing that God, that God spoke to Joshua was in Joshua 1.8. He said, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. The awesome thing about God is that he doesn't make things mysterious. 
that if we get into his word, his word is very clear and it helps us to make right decisions. It helps us, it gives us a, it gives us a master plan on how to see victory, how to see freedom, how to be able to walk into the promises of God. But we have to have the word of God, not just here, but here. It has to become who we are. We have to not just, not just like hear it over the pulpit or just get a daily verse on your phone. The word of God has to be something that you actually dive into and you allow to go into you and then transform you. That's the only way the word of God can do what it's designed to do. It's supernatural. It's not just reading a book. When the word of God goes in you, it does something supernatural that causes an endurance and a faith and a strength and a perseverance to keep going when times get hard because times do get hard. What I've noticed is this is that you know, my prayer closet, I'll be praying and I'll be talking to God and I'll hear the spirit of God speak a promise to me. And man, that feels so good. Do you guys agree? When you feel like God just gave you an encouragement, you know, just in your heart. It feels so good in that moment. When I'm on that mountain, it feels good. But then I get to the valley and I see the reality of what, what I thought I seen in that prayer room and then I come out into my living room and I see the reality of life and I'm like, wait, I felt so good in there. But now I see this and it looks nothing like you said it was supposed to be, God. You told me that healing was a promise. You told me that peace was a promise. You told me that deliverance was a promise that if I served you, God, then everything else would be added unto me that my children would be able to know you and love you and experience you. But then I come out of my prayer closet after your promise and I see that that's not the reality right here in front of my face. And I see the hurt and I see the broken and I see all of it. And you know what happens? It makes me doubt that what I heard was God. But you know what anchors that truth back in me is the word of God that I've instilled in my life over and over and over again. So the word of God is an anchor to what God is already speaking to you by his spirit. If we don't have the word of God in us, we'll be wishy-washy. We'll question if we heard God or not. We'll question if what he said was real. But the word of God anchors us and it helps us to believe that no matter what it looks like right now in this hour, that God is still faithful because his promises are true, that he is yes and amen that it doesn't matter how we feel it doesn't matter what we see what matters is what he says because he is faithful to it the word of God is powerful the word of God is designed to transform you and God is saying today that even if you've taken a step back from this because it happens he's saying right now I need you to get back in the game I need you to get back in the game, not just for you, but for your children and your children's children, for the people around you, for your coworkers, for your neighbors, for the lost, for the guy on the streets that has nowhere to live. I need you to get back in the game. And this is the game plan. If we don't have the game plan, we're not in the game. That means that when he's going this way, we're going this way. And God is saying, I need you to come with me because we've got some things to do. There is something that I want to speak especially to this upcoming generation. There is something in you that is so powerful because you are having to experience things that previous generations never had to experience. I never had to deal with the things that my kids had to deal with. The things that my daughter has to encounter, I never had to deal with some of those things because that wasn't the world that I grew up in. But God, he has equipped you as a generation to stand up and to develop the things in you that this world needs right now for today. And he will use you in such a powerful way that you will be surprised and astonished how you, you, just you, just little old you, can come in and change a life that is next to you. It doesn't even have to be all supernatural and crazy. I'm talking about just your words, your love, your hope, your faith. You can come in and do some damage. It's already in you. Be strong. Be courageous. It's in you. Allow God to bring it out. He wants to bring it out of you. He wants to bring it out of all of us because he's still working out his kingdom plan here on earth. This is why it's so important for us to to continue on with passing on faith, passing on hope, 
passing on the belief that God will do what only he can do. Because if Joshua didn't have Moses, he may have not wanted to cross over. The apostles continued later in the New Testament to spread the faith. You know that if they didn't, we wouldn't be here. If, if some of our fathers and, and mothers didn't do that, we wouldn't be here. And even if you grew up in a home and you were blessed to have that handed down to you and you had parents that instilled to you this faith and this strength and this, this, this endurance and this belief, not everyone has that, which is why the church in this hour needs to take a stand and not only stand, but take the responsibility that we have something that the world needs. See, I didn't have that in my life. My parents didn't have parents that taught them the faith. They couldn't give me what they didn't have. But someone made a decision to pray for little Jenny. Somebody made a decision to say, you know what, I see that girl. Man, she needs Jesus. I see her. Hopeless. I see her making these crappy decisions. I see her paying the consequences for those decisions. But that's not who God called her to be. That is not what God has for her. And so this person prayed. This person believed. That is our job today. That we are passing on a generational faith, not just to the generation coming up, but to those who never had it. There are people that have never heard it. The Bible says, how will they hear unless someone tells them? How will they know? God is using his church right now to release faith and hope into a world that needs it so desperately. You know, there's, this breaks my heart. There's, there's a young man in our, in our, the city that we live in. God, he was, he was a high schooler. He was young and he committed suicide. And his mom said, Something happened to him. It's like, I don't, I tried everything. I took him to counselors. I took him, I put him on medication. I did all these different things. And he said, but one day, he just became hollow. Like there was nothing in him. And I couldn't reach him. I couldn't get to him. And I've, I've, I've seen that in my loved ones at times. And I said, why, God? And he said, Jenny, the reason why it's so hollow and it's so dry and it's so empty is because there's no word in them. And he reminded me of a verse in the Bible in Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is led out into a place by God and God shows him this vision. And it's a valley of all these dry bones, human bones. And he talks to him and he says, the Lord asked Ezekiel, he said, son of man, can these bones live? Have you ever felt like something was impossible to be changed, to be raised up? And then Ezekiel said, oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. The word of God is so powerful and so supernatural because it's the Holy Spirit written word of God. It's the spirit of God coming out of the word and going into a situation, going into a person and bringing life back to dead places. In the wilderness, if you've had an area of your life that has died and dried up and you're like, it's done, it's gone, God is saying, let me breathe life back into it. Let me breathe life back into your loved ones that need hope, that need strength, that need me. We got to release the word to the world around us. It's what it needs. What you're seeing all around you, all the darkness, is a world without the word, without God without the Spirit of God, but you have something in you that can change all of it. Amen? Are we going to do this together? We're doing it together because we're a strong church, and God is not done. 
And God has a plan, and His plan is good. And we're a part of it. You guys just do me a favor. I want to pray for you. You just bow your heads for me and close your eyes. You know, I know what it feels like to be so distraught and so empty where I've literally been in my bathroom on the floor in tears. And I want to say if there's anyone in this room right now that's just having any kind of dryness, maybe lost hope, maybe you haven't even been able to experience God because you're, you haven't been able to live and let him in your heart. Can I just say that right now that God wants to come in and he wants to refresh those things. He wants to refresh those dry places. He wants to bring hope back into your life. He wants to change your course and get you out of the wilderness and into the promised land. So let me just pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for every soul, every person in this room. I thank you, Lord God, that you are speaking and bringing new life, Lord God, to the areas that have dried up, the places, Lord God, that have, have felt said hopeless. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are bringing in fresh, new revival, bringing fresh, new strength, bringing fresh, new peace and power and hope. And I thank you that you are raising up a church that is strong, that is confident, that knows our identity in you, that has the word of God in them, and that they are releasing it into a world that needs it so desperately, God. We pray right now, kingdom come. We pray right now will be done in every heart in this room, in our cities, in every city that we're in. We thank you for your will being done, and we thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.